How you doing guys? Welcome to another video. We're still on topic 8, acids and bases. This is volume 2 where we look at what are the properties of acids and bases. Let's go. Alright, volume 2, what are the properties of acids and bases? We do a heap of different reactions and we discuss what a neutralization reaction is. IB understandings is that we need to understand the different types of reactions of acids with different types of metals and metal oxides, and we just need to write equations for them. Now, acids react with metals, bases, and carbonates to form what we describe as being salts. A result refers to an ionic compound when the hydrogen of an acid is replaced by a metal or another positive ion. Salts form the reaction of acids and bases with metals or bases. For example, write the equation for the reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide to form a salt and water. So we have our NaOH, we react that with our HCl, we have an acid, we have base, so we form a salt, which in this case is sodium chloride. So if we wanted to form sodium chloride, we could react sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid together to form that salt. In the process, we get water. Now this type of reaction, an acid plus a base, is defined as being a neutralization reaction. Neutralization reactions are said to be exothermic. Exo meaning they release, and in this case they release heat. So any acid-base reaction can be classified as neutralization and it releases energy, or the temperature of the solution will increase. The first type of reaction that you need to know for acids is if an acid reacts with a reactive metal. And our reactive metals are calcium, magnesium, potassium, or zinc. So zinc can be added to a solution of hydrochloric acid, and you might have done this before. This is the pop test. Our products will be a salt and hydrogen gas. And you would test the hydrogen gas with a flame to determine if there was a pop or not. So our salt is zinc chloride, and our gas is hydrogen gas. Remember that hydrogen gas always has the formula H2. Now to write an ionic equation, the spectator ions are removed from the equation. And spectator ions are the ones that don't do anything. So what we do is we start off with our reactants and we break apart anything that's aqueous and only those things that are aqueous. So here the hydrochloric acid HCl can be broken into hydrogen ions and chloride ions. The zinc chloride being aqueous, that can also be broken down into its ions but we can't break down the H2, that stays the same. Then what we look for is the spectator ions are the ones that remain the same throughout the reaction. So in this case, our chloride ions have not changed. They're the same on the reactants and the same on the products. So that means the chloride ions are our spectator ions. Now in an ionic, in an ionic equation, we remove those spectator ions and just write what actually takes part in the reaction. So our ionic equation for this one would be zinc solid plus 2 H plus ions goes to Zn2 plus plus hydrogen gas. The second acid reaction is an acid plus a metal oxide and that forms salt and water. Metal oxides could be sodium oxide, magnesium oxide, calcium oxide or zinc oxide. These type of compounds are described as being alkaline or basic because they contain the oxide ion, which accepts a proton. So magnesium oxide is added to nitric acid, HNO3, and will form our salt of magnesium nitrate, and we must make sure we get the formula of that salt correct, and water. Because we've had to adjust the formula, we then have to adjust the balancing. Again with the ionic equation, we start to break apart the things that are aqueous, the ones that the ions are flowing around. So MgO, that's a solid, we can't break that down. The nitric acid though, that was aqueous, so we can break that down. Magnesium nitrate, the salt, that's an aqueous salt, so we can break that apart. And then our water remains the same. H2O, we can't break that down. So what's the ions that have remained the same throughout this reaction, or well, the nitrate. The nitrate was aqueous on the reactant side, it's aqueous on the product side, so that means it's a spectator ion and we can remove it from the equation. So our overall equation is MgO plus 2H plus aqueous goes to Mg2 plus aqueous plus H2O, another neutralization reaction, 
energy would be released in this process. If we have an acid plus a metal carbonate, we'll form salt, water and carbon dioxide. Metal carbonates are things like sodium carbonate, magnesium carbonate, calcium carbonate. What happens here is the CO3 2 minus ion breaks down to carbon dioxide and then the extra oxygen can be found in the water molecule. So here we have sodium carbonate, let's pretend this one is aqueous. We add that to hydrofluoric acid, HF, and then we will form our salt, which will be sodium fluoride, our carbon dioxide, and our water. We need to make sure that we balance this. We've got two sodiums on the left, so we need to put two sodiums on the right. So we'll need a two out the front of the NaF, and then we'll also need a two out the front of the hydrogen fluoride, or hydrofluoric acid. The ionic equation, again, if we separated the ions out, we look for the things that don't do anything. In this case, the spectator ions would be the sodium ions and the fluoride ions. So I've omitted them from this reaction, giving us our ionic equation, which is the carbonate plus two H plus ions goes to carbon dioxide and water. If we have an acid and a metal hydrogen carbonate, the reaction is virtually the same for the metal carbonates. Metal hydrogen carbonates in things, include things like sodium hydrogen carbonate or potassium hydrogen carbonate. So for example, potassium hydrogen carbonate could react with nitric acid to form a salt, potassium nitrate, carbon dioxide, and water. Again, if we remove the spectator ions, in this case, the potassium will be a spectator ion and the nitrate will be a spectator ion again. We're just left with the ionic equation, which is the hydrogen carbonate anion plus H plus aqueous goes to CO2 gas plus H2O liquid. Again, another neutralization reaction where it would release energy. The last one is if we have an acid and we react that with ammonia. Now ammonia reacts to form an ammonium salt, NH4+, and then the metal ion sticks to that ammonium salt. So if we have ammonia, for example, and we react that with sulfuric acid, H2SO4, we can produce a chemical called ammonium sulfate, which is actually a fertilizer. So we have our ammonia, NH3, and then we add that to our sulfuric acid, and then we get our ammonium sulfate. We need to make sure that we balance this correctly. So we have two ammoniums and one sulfate, and then we need to balance for our, our ammonium on the left-hand side. Okay, volume two, some top tips. Just know the general form of the equation. Don't try and remember them all. And then HCl, H2SO4, HNO3, they're the three acids that you must know the formula of. Hydrochloric, sulfuric, nitric. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.